making a video. Yeah, I'll keep this one short. Limited time on a camera for that very purpose. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, I mean, video's getting too long. So anyway, but there's a group of videos, you know, a whole clump of them. The Moment 3 videos in particular, anyway. Um, yeah, Snake Pliskin is doing some sort of weird, I'm a nice guy after all, um, video. And then uh, Gary Edwards did this Kantian thing, and it was rather convoluted and messy, but whatever. Um, you know, this whole virtue, are, are there, you know, edicts, you know, unchallenged, I mean, you know, things you just can't not do, that you must always do, kind of virtues, or are there virtues based on the circumstances? Um, and that gets back to Snake Pliskinus and his charity feels good thing. Yeah, and it usually feels good based on a circumstance. Again, it's every, everything you do... You know, your motivations are different depending on the circumstance. Sometimes you do things out of guilt. Some things you do things because you can gain an advantage. You know, if you're nice to certain people, they might be nice to you. So there's an exchange thing going on. There's all kinds of reasons why you might be what's called generous or altruistic. And so it's kind of not productive, I don't think, to talk about like some sort of like a, some sort of generic genetic impulse it's it's not <laughs> um, the social stuff you know the stuff that is part of our maturation and conditioning as social animals the fact that we can socially manipulate each other and that we are socially manipulated by our status in the community you know the whole hierarchy thing the whole alpha thing um, you know that's a real effect and so yes we try to generate strength through uh, having a group, you know, having a gang to belong to. Um, but that's a whole different another mechanism, and again, it really doesn't have anything to do with conversation about what should the human race do, what should America do, what should my community do, what should my family do, you know, what should I do? These questions have answers depending on the gravity of the question, okay, and the circumstance of who's, who's, what, what's the requirement, what needs to be served, what interest is to be served. Um, a narrow interest, uh, a collective interest, a bigger interest, a future interest. Like you could argue the future's bigger than the present, so it's almost always entitled to, um, first dibs, because uh, there's more at stake. Uh, I mean, that seems like an obvious one, right? I, I mean, it doesn't go for every circumstance, but it's just pretty much clear that if you, if you destroy some piece of value in the present, um, and then it won't be accessible to many people in the future, you can sort of understand that the you know, what you do to the future, the mess you make in the future, the debt, for example, right, is a good example. We make a bunch of debt now, the future has to pay it, um, it's a very onerous burden, um, it's kind of obvious you shouldn't place onerous burdens on future generations, because you wouldn't want to endure the burden of gulagging to have to go pay that burden, blah, 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 that kind of thing. So, I mean, these questions of ethics and virtue and what the right thing to do is, it's a little more complicated than just saying the word and pretending um, every circumstance has the same answer. So, I mean, in, in Gary Edwards, for he did use the example of, um, you know, Kant would be tripped in his ethics by the idea of um, outing, um, you know, the old Jewish girl, you know, Nazi Germany thing. And it's like, no, 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 no. I mean, even his ethics would say, no, you don't, you're, you're not obligated to tell liars the truth. And you're certainly not obligated to tell people the truth who don't have a right to request it, okay, because their interests aren't honorable, all right? Their motives aren't honorable. So you don't have to give dishonorable people the benefit of your honor. So you don't have to be honorable when you're being extorted by the dishonorable. So that's what I would say to Antikantavad also, um, in his rhetoric. Uh, so we'll just play this, it's a quickie. 
dead space, and then he gets to it. Given the well-known capacity of humans to lie, is it necessary to enforce the truth? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's really necessary, especially in circumstances like trials and stuff, that, uh, yes, if you go in and you lie about somebody's behavior that might cause them to be incarcerated, that, yes, we should enforce the truth in the sense there should be a, a huge punitive penalty that would cause deterrence that would, you know, prevent people from risking the, the result of lying. So there's a circumstance, yes. Um, in every circumstance, no. Again, who's asking the question? If it's an honorable request for the truth, if something honorable asks you in an honorable manner, to fill out a form correctly because it's, you know, social security information or some other information about taxes or some other thing. It's an honorable request. It's, this is what we as a democracy have decided to do. You have an obligation to fill out the form correctly. Um, yes, you're obligated. Um, yes, that's the obligation of civilization and function. It's an honorable request. Now, unless you can say it's a dishonorable request and void it, you can make that claim. And I say, under current political circumstances, it might be a valid claim because the politicians are lying, okay, um, all the time. But the argument has to be made also is that the people don't seem to want to fix the democracy and fix the problems that are creating the fact that liars get elected because we're giving a choice between a preposterously big, huge, giant liar and a only humongous liar. I mean, it's hard to tell which one's bigger, right? Um, so, yeah, that's where it gets a little gnarly. Um, but again, it's not unfixable. It's not uncorrectable. It's not some sort of, we only have two roads we can travel and this is it. So, again, it's, you know, just, it's all, it, you know, it's, you have to apply it to a circumstance. And you can't just say all circumstances are equal because all circumstances aren't equal. And our ethics, again, sometimes we do something nice because somebody's cute. Sometimes we do nice things for stupid, illegitimate style reasons. But it doesn't change that it's still nice to be nice, so that's good. It's just nice. It's not nice to be a bigot, so you try not to be one. <laughs> okay, you make an effort anyway to at least acknowledge that, oh, that's just a bigotry of mine, this whole cuteness thing. And uh, I should be able to see past that, or I should at least try to see past that. And that would be the virtuous thing to do. But you can't change your biology necessarily. You can only augment it. Um, you can bend it and twist it with principles and ideas. I mean, it's not you doing it. It's your better you. The you that has been educated and has knowledge of the fact that it is a rigid game played by rigid rules in a material universe and outcomes will not be uh, you won't have them by magic you have to have them by some sort of effort and work and even gleaning the truth out of all this mush takes effort and work and it just seems like people don't want to do that um, they just want to pretend reality is something I get to make up because it's easier and you know that's just kind of bullshit you have to defend if you're gonna if you're gonna do something that's gonna implicate any other feeling thing. You really do have to defend it. You have to be willing to defend your actions. Um, you can't just avoid by jumping to some. I'm gonna pretend uh, we never obtained language. We never obtained knowledge of the workings of the material universe, and that I can just go back to being a dumb animal. Um, you know, when it's convenient. When convenient, I will play by Darwin's rules, and uh, then when, not, when convenient, I will collect my Social Security from the government, and when convenient, you'll... And that's just... That's, that is no virtue. Being duplicitous and being um, inconsistent and... What's the word for that? <laughs> you know, when you're not uh, hi hypocritical. Um, yeah, that's bad. Uh, so I guess that would be an argument that one could argue if you were going to say it's probably always bad to be a hypocrite. <laughs> yeah, probably always bad to be a hypocrite. Um, I don't know if they can come up with a circumstance where hypocrisy wins. Um, you know, where you must be. Uh, I mean, even in a... 
well, whatever. They probably can, but the point is, is none of this stuff is supposed to be written for the exceptional circumstances. It's written for the general, everyday, most of the time. This is the rule. Um, you know, there's just no no one gets into their car every day with a checklist of what will I do if a meteor hits the car? What will I do if the car gets struck by you know atomic lightning? What will I do if all four tires blow up at once? Nobody prepares their brain or, or you know gets it ready for having a conversation of, for, you know, about exceptionally bizarre unusual circumstances so quit playing this game that when you're going to do philosophy that all you're going to do is look at the bizarre and the catch-22 circumstances where it doesn't apply I mean it's just such a cop-out um, to talk about totalitarianism in countries that have democracies is again just kind of absolute bullshit <laughs> okay the policies we implement are argued and um, they should be better argued I'll grant you that but again whose fault is it they're not is because most people like the cheats that are in the system they like liars running the game because they're taking advantage of it I mean it's a, a group of special interests um, the teachers and the government workers and the filthy rich and the sucky Christians are all minorities in the country as a whole but they want to have majority power and the way they have it is through a cabal of self-interest um, where they basically screw everybody else to get what they want they make a deal with the devil um, to pick your pocket and and uh, break your future uh, but we can stop them the majority still isn't one of those things the majority of people isn't a cop <laughs> and if the majority would just say well even though uncle bob is a cop yeah he's a fucking asshole and he needs to be tied down a little <laughs> you know he needs to be playing by some better rules uh he needs to th not think he's immune uh anyway and um so anyway that's pretty much all i wanted to say is that you know it's all good talking about this virtue stuff. I like it. Obviously, that's not what the Anacontabod's doing. He's just talking about the totalitarianism of, um, you know, actually doing the right thing by uh, the best means possible, which is just consensus. And that's all you can work on is some percentage of consensus. Um, no, I don't think it's the only standard to judge the value of an idea. I mean, I think it's certainly reasonable for somebody of reasonable intelligence <laughs> to recognize that there's a whole pile of people who are disqualified by ignorance to be even having an opinion. Um, and they should just shut the fuck up because they haven't done any work to acquire any knowledge of what they're talking about. They're just, you know, talking shit. I mean, there should be a standard. You know, you shouldn't be voting if you don't know who's even running. You know, and there are people who do that. <laughs> you know, they have no idea. They just vote for the the party that's paid them, that gave them a cupcake to do it. Uh, but anyway, that's a whole other subject, I think, probably, maybe. Just wanted to keep this on this, this idea that, yeah, we have, a, we have a nature, and the nature's usually pretty crappy. And um, it's always best to be doing the right thing for the right reasons, if possible. That sounds nicer. Um... But yeah, if you do the right things for the wrong reasons, good, fine, great. Um, but f identifying the right thing to do is not that difficult. And um, so all this bullshit, frankly, about how um, you know none of these, these philosophies are void because of some catch-22 is just not... I don't like Kant's ethics or his idea of virtue first and all that kind of stuff. Um, but there's no point in negating it because of some catch-22, um, you know, you're going to knock, knock, out, knock out your neighbor to the Nazis or something. I mean, that's, that's not its application in 99.99% uh, of reality. So it's kind of a bullshit move to say it's void, you know, because it doesn't work, point zero zero one percent of the time. Uh, so anyway. And I guess I just wanted to rag on Snake Pliskinus a little because he was totally full of shit.
<laughs> you know, it just keeps talking like we're we're only biological organisms and that our only life is this little life that we live personally. And no, that what's far more important than the little life you live personally is how you affect the group and the society and the culture and the world. So that's where you really want to apply your charity. You want to apply your influence. Um, Band-aids are great, but curing disease is the real game. Anyway. <laughs>